Hi, this is SynthChaser from SynthChaser.com. I've got four broken ARP avatars here that I've acquired over the years, and it's time to start moving them along. For those of you unfamiliar with the ARP avatar, it's basically a keyboardless ARP Odyssey, two oscillator mono synth, with the addition of a guitar interface. It does have interface jacks on the back, so it can be played with either CV gate and trigger control, or with a special hexaphonic guitar pickup. Most of the time when I see these in the wild, they're missing the hex pickup and are being used as a desktop module. Some people take it a step further and drill holes on the panel and make a mess of the inside adding patch points, trying to make a semi-modular synthesizer out of it. The pickup and the cable are worth a few hundred dollars, and the guitar interface performs poorly, and it's often irreparably broken, so it's an easy out to sell the pickup and avoid dealing with the guitar interface. I have three pickups and one cable. So at least one of my avatars is going to wind up just as a synth module. Here's the plan of attack. We'll pick one of these avatars, open it up, and have a tour of the inside. Then we'll do the general restoration work, like capacitors and sliders. Then we'll get the synthesizer itself working properly, and then we'll try to get the guitar interface working. To pop the hood on the avatar, we remove one screw from the bottom. This one is all bent up and that screw catches on the top lid here. So with the screw out we can pop the lid up and inside we see that there's five main circuit boards, a power supply and the interconnect board. And the boards have letters for their names. Underneath the front panel we find boards A, B, and C connected together with this interconnect board. For those of you who have seen the inside of an ARP Odyssey or watched my video on the ARP Odyssey, this looks familiar because all these boards except board A, are the same as the Odyssey. Board A is quite a bit bigger in the avatar because it has the user interface for the guitar synthesizer on it. Board B is the same oscillator circuit board that you find in an Odyssey, and board C is the same filter, VCA, and envelope generator board as well. On the bottom there are two large circuit boards. The smaller of them here on the right is board D, which generates a control voltage from a guitar string signal. Board E is the larger one on the left, and it extracts triggers from the guitar signals and routes the correct string to the CV generator on board D. You'll notice that this board has an encapsulated submodule. In the early days, ARP used encapsulated submodules to try to protect their designs, which just happened to conceal that they had infringed on Moog's patented ladder filter design. They started by potting them in epoxy, which makes the modules not feasible to repair. We ran into this challenge on the Don Lewis ARP soloist that had a bad 4030 violin voice module in a previous video. Later they potted them in silicone caulk-like material, so with time and patience they could be excavated from their potting and repaired. I have a video showing this process repairing a 4023 ARP Odyssey filter. Toward the late 70s they stopped potting the modules altogether, and modules could easily be repaired, like this one, a 4075 filter that's used in late model ARPs like this. Well, for the Avatar, they thought that what they had come up with was so cool and special that they went back to the epoxy potting to keep the world from finding out how they had made their poorly performing guitar synthesizer. And the schematics have never been published, like anyone would have wanted to copy this. But nearly 50 years later, it would have been nice to have been able to make a clone to replace a bad module. Anyway, back here we've got the power supply. If my memory serves me correctly, I think this is the same power supply that's found in the ARP Omni 1 and Omni 2. And this little board back here just has some jacks on it. So now that we've seen what's under the hood, let's tear it down and recap it. The tantalum capacitors, like these little blue blobs, in all ARPs of this era need to be replaced because they're highly prone to shorting out even when they're not exposed to over-voltage. Sadly, the tantalums locked away in the epoxy-filled submodules can't be replaced, and therein lies the potential for the guitar interface to get bricked.
Okay, so I've got the boards out, and uh, you saw me clean up the inside of the case a little. That white stuff that I was cleaning off the back of the panel was heat sink compound for the, the power supply to help dissipate the heat from the power supply into the, the metal of the case. Uh, also, at the beginning, you may have noticed me going around with the Sharpie and uh, marking things um, on the uh, connectors, a little red line, and down on the circuit boards, a little red line. That's because these connectors, while they're keyed, uh, they did not use keyed header headers on the circuit boards. So it's very easy to plug them in backwards, which in the case of like this power connector, they, they could do some damage. So um, I at least, you know, will mark this so um, me and, and subsequent people that work on it, you know, um, have an indicator of how to plug things in. Uh, also on one of the boards, uh, this one here, you may have noticed I, I wrote a little I, and that is because uh, for this board, um, the, uh, the traces run very close to the screw hole. So if you use a regular screw like they, they, they used, uh, you're going to short this trace out to the chassis, which will break functionality. Um, ARP made this blunder on, on a lot of their synthesizers. So there are positions, certain positions on certain circuit boards where you need to use an insulator, an insulating washer uh, between your screw and the circuit board like this. So again, this just helps me and subsequent people remember where that goes and that that needs to be insulated there. And then one other thing that you'll notice is, because this is the ARP Omni power supply, uh, it distributes power to one board and in the Omni it branches off to all the other boards. So what this does is it plugs down here onto board E and then these wires going off distribute the, the power to all the remaining circuit boards rather than having all these wires branching off the, the power supply. So now that I have all the boards out, I'm going to recap them with the capacitors from the kit that I have on my website, synthchaser.com. But before I do that, there's something I want to show you. So I was curious as to whether or not any of these boards had short circuits on them. So uh, I measured them at the power connector with my multimeter. Here set into resistance mode. And I had the black lead on the ground plane or the ground pin of the power connector and the red lead on one of the power rails. So here on the, the negative 15 volt rail we have 520 ohms, which, which is reasonable. Uh, on the plus 15 volt rail though, we have a dead short circuit, 0 0.3 ohms. So somewhere on this board is a short circuit and we're hoping that it's not in this module because this, this module is epoxy filled and a short circuit in here will basically brick this synthesizer. Um, it'll pull that 14 volt, 15 volt rail down to ground and nothing in the synthesizer will work correctly. So we can see if it's in this module by actually removing this module and see if the short circuit goes away. So if it's anywhere but this module, we can fix it. If it's in this module, then, then the guitar interface on this ARP avatar will be irreparably broken. Um, I mean, in my case, I have four of them, so I could take the guitar interface, take this from another one, and, and kick, kind of kick the problem down the road. But so let's, let's disconnect this. So I pulled this module out now, so you see it has pins that go into these Molex connectors. A lot of the ARP submodules are soldered into the board, so you have to desolder to remove the module, but not this one. So now, moment of truth, let's go back here. Uh, we got the black lead on the ground plane and the red lead here, and we still have our dead short. So the short circuit is somewhere here on board E, and I mean, unless there's another one in the module, I'd have to look at the pinout for the module. So looking on the back here, it looks like this one's the uh, the power connector. So let me see, this is 
Yeah, this is ground. So that corresponds to here. So if we measure it on the uh, module itself, we've got a high resistance on the minus 15 volt rail and a high resistance on the plus 15 volt rail. So epoxy module at least is not short circuited. So now we've recapped this board E, and I'm curious to see if the short circuit resolved. So again, um, go here on the ground plane, and here on the I'll move this over, on the plus 15 volt rail, and we can see now we have a 5k resistance and rising. So there was a shorted tantalum capacitor. And I don't know if you noticed, but I took the two 10 volt, capa uh, 10 microfarad capacitors that were used as decoupling capacitors for these rails, and I set them aside here. So I'm just curious. I forget which one is the minus 15 and which one's the 15 volt rail. But uh, let's take a look at them and see if, if one of these happened to be the culprit. And sure enough, there it is 0 0.3 volts. So this capacitor, uh, even though it, it doesn't look like there's anything wrong with it from the outside, the uh, coating isn't cracked for moisture to get in, it's not burnt or, or anything like that, uh, this, this component is, is shorted and uh, we've resolved that now. So we shouldn't have any short circuits in our synthesizer, hopefully, when we're done. But we still need to go through and get all of these little capacitors out because if they're not shorted now, they will be shorted sooner or later. So they all need to go. And I think we'll just do the one uh, soldering and desoldering time lapse video. Uh, the procedure is the same for the other boards. So here, here's a tip. I, uh, I don't know if you noticed in the time lapse video, I was just replacing you know, all of the one microfarad capacitor, all of the 10 microfarad capacitor. And I was just basing it on the polarity that they, they were already installed on the board. Uh, I wasn't relying on the schematics. I wasn't relying on the PCB layout. I wasn't relying on the markings on the board. And that's actually the safest way to approach this. Uh, because in many cases, the markings on the board and the schematics are wrong. Like here's board C. And you see here, this is the, the marked positive side of this capacitor. Uh, this is a capacitor that goes across the 15 volt rail. Uh, but if I go and I measure continuity between the, uh, the marked negative side of that uh, part and the 15 volt rail, uh, we can see that it's actually mislabeled on the board. So if I had followed the markings here, I would have installed my, my new capacitor backwards. So just look at the old ones, replace them one for one. And here's the pile of stuff that was replaced. We have uh, a lot of tantalum capacitors, a few resistors uh, from the filter enhancement, which I'll show you in a second, uh, electrolytic capacitors that have a date code from 1977, uh, a couple broken slide switches as well. And here you can see I've removed the 4075 filter module and I've replaced the tantalum capacitors that was, were in that as well as a handful of resistors to correct the cutoff frequency of the filter. Uh, so I'll put that back on here where it was mounted. Um, and then uh, I replaced a couple slide switches and I'm going to clean the remaining slide switches um, just as I did in my ARP Odyssey video. 
And then uh, comes the matter of the sliders. So I discussed sliders, the ARP sliders, at length in my ARP Odyssey video recently or from earlier this year. Uh, you can go check that. The, the uh, bottom line was the best solution is to replace the sliders with the uh, precision slider sets that I, I make. Um, there's uh, illuminated and non-illuminated versions. Uh, however, there are some economic considerations for the avatar. Uh, if I put too much time or uh, parts into it, I'm going to have to make the price of the avatar higher, and I'm not sure that the market really has demand or support for for high-end ARP avatars. Uh, so in an effort to keep the price low, I'm going to see if I can get away with spray cleaning these sliders. So they're very fuzzy and I'm going to vacuum them off and vacuum them out before I spray them. Otherwise I'm going to be pushing stuff into them. And I'll see if I can get acceptable performance out of them. Um, that'll make it so I can price the ARP avatar lower because I am going to be selling these ARP avatars. Um, so if you're watching this video and, and you say, oh, I'm really interested in an ARP avatar, but I really want the nice sliders, just send me a message. I have more of them and can make one that meets your requirements. So I realize I've been talking for quite a while, and I think the video is probably getting a bit too long. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to end the video here I'm going to go off and I'm going to clean the sliders and the switches and then we'll have a part two where we continue and we get the synthesizer working and then we try to get the guitar interface working. So that'll do it for this video. I'm Synth Chaser from SynthChaser.com. Thanks for watching and have a great day.